Hello guys, this is Daniel from Learn QT Guides and in this video we're going to look at some books I recommend to anybody who is uh, willing to learn a little more about the QT technology. I get a lot of questions from students asking for book recommendations and I thought I should share my thoughts here on the books that are available that you can look at to improve your knowledge on QT development. The first place I like to go when I'm looking for a book on QT is this link here, which collects some of the books that have been published on QT development. And uh, the first problem that arises is which book to choose and why, because there are many, and you can see that there are a lot of new books here. For example, this one is from last year, 2019, 2019 here. But there are some books which are old, but still pretty good if you really want to advance your knowledge on QT. Okay, the first thing I want to make pretty clear is that there are two sides to Qt development. You can use the Qt widgets technology to design graphical user interfaces, or you can use a new API, which is qt Quick, to design user interfaces that are more designed or that are more leaning towards mobile and embedded devices. And all these things are going to be using C++ underground, so some knowledge of C++ is still required to be able to take advantage of what Qt has to offer. Here I have a few examples. With Qt widgets, you can design applications like this. This is actually Qt Creator, the IDE we use to design Qt applications. This is an application we have built for one of our courses and uh, it is built using Qt widgets and it uses the graphics view framework under the hood. So with Qt widgets, you can build applications like this. QML is really designed to build slick and dynamic user interfaces for mobile and embedded. So you will have something like this with QML. Now with other technologies, there are a clearly defined path that many people go through to, to learn that technology. And I'm going to show you what I mean. For example, with the C++ programming language without using Qt, you can learn basic things like uh, data types, variables, you can learn about functions, classes, inheritance, polymorphism, and all these things. And at some point, you will have the basics of C++ nailed down and you're going to branch into other things. For example, you can do game development using OpenGL, you can design graphical user interfaces with Qt, you can build all kinds of applications, but the starting path is really common to many people. The same happens with languages like Python. You learn the basics and at some point you're going to need to branch. For example, you're going to go into web development. You can start building AI application or machine learning applications and all kinds of crazy things. The problem with Qt is that it is really not clear which path somebody should follow to learn about Qt because Qt can be used to do a lot of things. If you want to design desktop applications with Qt, Qt widgets are going to be perfect for you. It is a mature API and you can use it to design any kind of graphical user interface application. If you are targeting mobile and embedded, then Qt Quick is going to be your best bet. And for beginners who don't have a clear target, all they want is to learn about Qt and probably land a job later, I do recommend first to learn Qt widgets. This is going to make you very familiar with the C++ API of Qt and you can branch into Qt Quick very easily and uh, you're going to need to interface to C++ anyway in your Qt applications if you want to take advantage of things like threading, networking, databases and all kinds of crazy things you can need for your applications. So these are my basic ideas and it is what I'm going to follow to recommend some of the books you can read when you want to learn more about Qt. And this is a book I can recommend if you are getting started and you want to learn a little more about Qt widgets. It covers the basics and uh, many of the examples are modern. You can see that it is from 2018 and it focuses on Qt5. And this is a good thing. You want to avoid headaches as much as possible, especially when you're getting started with a technology like Qt. And uh, the reason I do recommend this book is that many of my students have said good things about it. 
I have to say that I haven't read it myself. I don't have that much time to read books these days, but it is a good starting point and you can look at it and see if it can work for you if your target is build and cute widgets application. I think they have a chapter in on QML, but it is really minor. They do focus on cute widgets for the most part. If you are looking for more advanced things, there are two more books that I can recommend, but they are pretty old. Let's go down and see if we can find them. And uh, the two books I can really recommend is this Foundations of Cute Development. It is pretty old. You can see that it is from 2007, but it does cover the concept pretty well. The other one is this one, Advanced QT Programming. It is pretty good. It covers advanced things like the model view architecture, graphics view framework, and don't be scared away by the fact that it is a QT4 book. I think that by the time you are done with the book I just recommended, which is Hands-On Cute Development, let's go up and see if I can find it. If you are done with this book, you're going to have most basics laid down and it won't be really difficult to run the examples in this book because the concepts are really more important. I personally feel that most of these new books are kind of rushed. They don't walk you through the concepts very well and it is really hard to find your way around. Again, my opinions may be biased because I have used these books in the past, but feel free to do more research on your own and see if you can find something that is really useful to you. Okay, these are my three book recommendations in terms of Qt widgets. We have the hands-on GUI programming with C++ and Qt. We have the foundations of Qt development and we have the advanced Qt programming book by Mark Sommerfield. These are really great books and you're going to learn a lot from them. Now, what about QML? Which book should you read? Again, I am going to go from the standpoint of what you really want to build because you really have to choose the right tool for the job. So if you want to build a really mainstream mobile application, an application like WhatsApp, Viber, or Facebook Messenger, an application that is really going to use a lot of background things, I don't really recommend using QML because in my experience, there are a lot of limitations when you want to use background services, when you want to access the file system, Qt doesn't really do well in that regard. Most of these things are going to require you to interface to the native application. If you are on iOS, you're going to dive into Swift or Objective-C and things like that. If you are on Android, you're going to need to interface to the Android SDK anyway. And uh, in my experience, it was just easier to go native and use Swift and Android right away. But today, the options are changing pretty quick. We have something like Flutter and Dart, which is going to make it really easy to design mainstream mobile applications. They're going to make your life a whole lot easier. Again, these are my thoughts based on my experience with QML. Some people might disagree or agree, but these are my recommendations. And you should take this with a grain of salt and uh, do your own research and see what fits better in what you are trying to achieve. But if you want to build a simple mobile application, if you have a few screens, things like to-do lists, weather applications, and things like that, QML is going to be really good and it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Another area where QML is going to help you a lot is if you are designing an embedded system, you need to put together a simple screen where people can interact with your application. It is going to be pretty good. And this is the direction I think the Qt company is trying to go in. They're trying to tune the Qt framework more for these embedded devices. And I see Qt being used a lot in medical equipment, embedded devices where you need a human machine interface, and it is going to work pretty well. I think Qt is also pretty good in automotive systems where you have this screen in the car and you need to design a slick user interface. Qt Quick is really going to work well in those areas. Now, if you have decided that QML and Qt Quick are your thing, there is a book which is free. The link is here, you can browse to it, and it's going to walk you through the basics of QML. The problem I find with this book is that it tries to mix QML C++ on the go, so new people can get pretty confused pretty quick, but a lot of people find it helpful, and it is a pretty good start if you want to start learning about QML and Qt Quick. 
Another book I can recommend on QML and Qt Quick if you want to do pretty advanced things is the game programming using Qt5. The book here, it is pretty good. You're going to do a lot. And it also tries to mix Qt Quick and C++. And you're going to learn both of these technologies at the same time, but you're going to learn a lot by using this box. Okay, so these are my recommendations for books on Qt. Be sure to come to this link here and browse through these books yourself and see if you can find something that works much better for what you are trying to build. Okay, before I let you go, if you are ever in need of a video course, please know that we have a lot of courses on Qt. If you want to learn about Qt widgets, we have a beginner's course and an intermediate course. And if you want to learn about threading, we have a full-blown course on multi-threading and IPC. And if you want to learn about QML, we have a course for you here. This is a beginner's course where you learn the basics. We have an intermediate course on interfacing between C++ and QML. And if you want to do advanced things like building your own models and all kinds of crazy things, we have an advanced course on interfacing between C++ and QML. The links to these courses are shared in the description below. Okay, this is really all I have to share with you guys. If you have any books you recommend, please do share in the comments below. I have also been getting requests for recommendations on video courses and all kinds of crazy things you can go through to learn about QT. I am going to make a video about that in a few coming days. But for now, this is what I had to share and I hope you find this useful. Till next time, bye.